For today's video, I thought I'd do a little bit of a story time. I don't feel like we've done one before, at least not a dedicated video such as this one. And it's on a topic that I talk about relatively regularly on this channel. And I think it's a topic that is still a little bit taboo, especially in the luxury community. I feel like you're trying to buy a fantasy or being sold a fantasy, if you will. But there's a dark side to owning luxury or anything worth anything and that is of course theft and so i thought for today's video we do a chit chatty walk through memory lane if you will of the five thefts some attempted and one actually successful uh, that has happened to me and if you've been seeing a lot moving around you probably notice it's pebbles i think overall it's that of being a cautionary tale and when i say that i don't want people to suddenly think that i'm scaremongering or that i'm you know inducing any kind of panic but i do think there is something to be said about being careful being cautious and being aware of your surroundings and the changing times that we are seeing in the world and while i myself as a luxury creator will talk about the benefits and the great parts of luxury i can't can't ignore the glaring realities that many of us today are facing and I think there's just this general attitude that these kind of things they'll never happen to me until it happens. Now of course we have five mini story times that I'm going to pack into this video and the large majority of them, I hate to say it, are based in London. So let's get started with the story time or attempted theft number one and actually I shouldn't say attempted because this one was actually the only successful one and so this was actually around my Chanel wallet and I remember buying it I think at Heathrow maybe Terminal 5 that's where I used to get all of my luxury goods before Brexit happened because you could get the tax back. I think up until the point of the theft, I'd only used it like once or twice. So that's why it was even more sad, not just the fact that it was my first Chanel wallet, but also the fact that I barely used it before it got stolen. So the incident took place, ironically enough, also at Heathrow. It was boarding a flight from London to Hong Kong. So it was just the start of an exciting holiday. You can see where this is going. I go straight to my favorite place, which at the time, of course, was, surprise, surprise Chanel. And I I actually at the time bought my beautiful Chanel mini. It was the rectangular iridescent pinky purple. I was in a great mood. I had a big Chanel bag and just to set the scene as well, I probably didn't help myself. I had my Louis Vuitton duffel keephole. And then I think had my MCM backpack. So it was kind of like logo. So I was alone at the time. I was going to meet a friend out there on the other side who was already there. So I get on the plane and I'm actually a window seat. And there's a couple. It was this, I guess, boyfriend and girlfriend. And obviously I'm loading in because I'm squeezing in all of like my, my Chanel bag, my keep and whatnot, right? I think, you know, fast forwarding, I didn't see much of it. You know, I would keep going in and out to use the restroom, etc. And, you know, there'll be lights out for periods of time, but nothing out of the ordinary. Then we leave the plane. And then as I think we go through passport control, I notice that my wallet is missing. Obviously, throughout the flight, you're not looking for your wallet or any documentation, are you? And Pebbles is now back, so let's continue the story. So I remember at the time, I was super panicked. I didn't really know what authorities to go to because I'd since exited the plane. So then I contacted the nearest desk from my flight provider. They actually called some flight attendants to go back on the scene. And because of, I think, regulations, they only allowed those certified individuals on that plane. So they searched the area, there was nothing there. I even actually called to the Chanel in Heathrow to see if I had left my wallet. They showed CCTV that I had left with my wallet in my bag. And there was no instance by which I dropped it on the way or anything like that. And so the conclusion was therefore that this couple had stolen it from my bag. And I'm not gonna lie, they gave me a little bit of a shady vibe. I don't know it's just something about physiognomy you can just tell if someone is decent and kind and they didn't look that way I think it must have been when I'd gone to the restroom that they had since taken my wallet and so then I contacted the airline provider and I said you know you need to search these individuals they've probably not left the airport yet you know let's hurry this thing up to see if they've actually got it and then the airline company said, we do have the details of the passengers that were sat next to you, but we aren't able to share those details. So apparently anything goes on an airplane. It's all fair game if you get something stolen there. I guess it's like international jurisdiction. So I had to file a local police report in Hong Kong. So as you can imagine, I was so upset. This whole image of this happy holiday was immediately dashed. I had to go straight to the police because they were Hong Kong residents. I had to do it there as well. Spent basically the whole evening at this police office and it was really a rubbish time to be honest nothing of course came of that police report you know for a wallet which was at the time three or four hundred pounds was it really worth it i think i actually separated my wallet so i had 
a card holder and then I had a wallet and in the card holder was some cards and the other one was others and so thankfully IDs and things were separate but I think really big lesson learned especially when it comes to traveling alone especially as a woman just don't go out wearing gaudy stuff even though I like to think that you know having a key pool with a kind of muted monogram was something that was a bit more understated. I think paired with the Chanel carrier bag and then my MCM backpack, it was just a lot to handle. That probably made me a target. Thankfully, from then on out, the other attempts weren't successful at all. And now let's move on to the next attempted theft story. And this is about a handbag. And this is a handbag that I do not have any longer in my collection. And that is my Dolce and Gabbana floral clutch and I've sold this maybe almost two years ago. This actually happened at London Fashion Week of all events. So my friend was taking photos on my DSLR and she had basically a bag of clothes underneath her, in between her legs. And then what I would do is check the photos by walking to her and then we'd look at the stuff. We did this a couple of times. There was no real foot traffic there. And you know, we had from both of our angles cause she was looking this way, I was looking that way. We could see peripherally everything that was going on. Then there was one time that I was essentially walking to her and I think the bag beneath her, which had, um, I'd rested my Dolce & Gabbana bag on top of that bag momentarily because she wanted to show me on the camera in the movement of twisting the camera and also me putting the bag down. It was, I guess, a little bit free in terms of view and perhaps for the taking. So as I was looking at the camera and I guess she was also looking at the camera with me. Essentially, a man came up and used that gap that had been created to lift up that Dolce & Gabbana clutch. I literally walked away. And because I was looking at the viewfinder, or I saw it kind of out of the corner of my eye, but it didn't look like he was picking up my, anything really, least of all, my bag. But then I heard my friend, she immediately, I think, clicked her fingers and literally did this and said, put that down now, in the most sternest voice. I'd never seen her raise her voice up to that point. And the guy literally put it back and, and dropped it and then walked off. And that walk slowly became a run. And we were just stunned, staring at each other, wondering what on earth had just happened. Thankfully, inside, I did not have wallet or phone or keys or anything valuable in there. It was just for the fashion week photos, really. But it was a crazy experience that I think was this close from actually ending in a successful theft. It's one of those incidents that I actually laugh, not because it's in any way funny or lighthearted, because obviously a theft is something very serious, but the fact that he was so brazen about it and so casual and then didn't actually commit. Now let's move on to another attempted theft. Thankfully I can use the word attempted. It was a handbag as well and it was my beloved Chanel boy bag. Now I bought this boy bag maybe eight or so years ago and it was my pride and joy. I say was because I've since parted ways with it. I'd used it up until a point where it was battered and bruised. I'm actually surprised, pleasantly surprised if anything that someone else wanted to take it off my hands. This attempted theft actually happened in the middle of London. Again, it was in Piccadilly Circus, Leicester Square kind of area. So you can imagine the big lights, loads of people around. I was there, actually I was going out for dinner. I was with a friend. So I had a nice dress on, I had my Chanel boy bag, trusty boy bag on my arm. I think I even wore an overcoat. So it was just overcoat with fastening and then the handbag over the top. And I usually take very good care in terms of flipping my bag logo side in so that people don't know it's a Chanel boy bag. But I guess in this particular instance, the robbers knew exactly what they were looking for, even with the fakes market being rampant at the time. So I just come out through the tube and we just hit up Piccadilly or Leicester Square, I cannot remember precisely, but whichever one it was, it had lots and lots of exits. It can be very confusing to navigate your way out, especially if you're following like a Google Maps, which is what we were doing. So we were coming up the escalator and you know, it's telling us to go to like this exit on the right. So I was going through the barriers. I had this feeling someone's watching me from the back and you know, I kind of brushed it off because I'm not that important in the world and you know, there's just a lot going on. And as I go through the barrier, I notice he's not coming through the barrier. He actually goes back into the tube. But as he does that, I actually caught his eye because I was like, that's really weird. Why did he do that? And he actually signals to somebody over the barrier and he like does a nod. 
And then I noticed as I'm walking off and I was just kind of watching to see what would happen. And then the guy actually starts to follow us and go out the same exit. And I knew that he was following us because we were kind of frantic. We were kind of going from one exit to another. And while they are close together and it could be a mistake, he was kind of going along with those motions. And so we left one of the exit and then I, that's where I broke it to my friend. Like, you see this guy? He's following us and I think he wants my bag. Because that was the only thing at the moment, at the time, that was of any kind of value. It's not like he could just steal, I don't know, the shoes off my feet or something like that. So we keep walking and I keep subtly turning my head. He's there right behind. Then my friend goes sit and we're like, yeah, we need to get rid of this guy because we do not want any trouble with him. And actually one of the things we did on the fly, which is something that I would recommend to all individuals, is to go somewhere where there's lots of cameras and lots of people. So I went into one of those London, you know, those tourist souvenir shops and there's obviously CCTV everywhere in the shops. And we stay in there for like two minutes or something, then we come out and he's completely gone. He's disappeared into the ether and then we can actually proceed on to our meal but some very very valuable lessons learned there and it just made me realize that you know just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean somebody is not surveying you doesn't mean that you're not being marked so always be vigilant and the fact that this was basically perhaps a ring was even more disturbing that they were just working these tubes for unsuspecting tourists. Now we are on to attempted theft number four and actually we're pivoting away from the fashion division of luxury and actually I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about two incidents that happened to me relatively recently actually within basically a month of each other of a different kind of luxury item. My puppy Pebbles. <laughs> Let's get into the first of the two remaining attempted thefts that we're going to cover in this video. And the first was actually almost outside my own house. And this incident was actually on a relatively normal, straightforward dog walk. On this day, it was nothing special. In fact, I looked particularly like a slob, full hoodie, uh, overcoat, puffer jacket with leggings on, trainers, and it was a rainy grey day. So I was especially not in any mood to make an effort. So we're on our walk and I like to take her, especially given she is still growing, she's still a puppy, that she goes on extended sniff walk. It's very important for the dogs to get stimulated through their nose. That's how they learn. That's how they get lots of information. So we went to some cul-de-sacs that are near our streets and there's two cul-de-sacs on one particular road that I wanted to take her to. So we go through the first cul-de-sac and the idea was that she would sniff into this cul-de-sac and then come around the other side and then we'd walk out and then we'd do the next one. So all's good on the first one. I notice a car that is backing into what looks like their driveway. Nothing crazy about that. So didn't think much of it. Move on then to the next cul-de-sac. As we are making our way around that cul-de-sac because it's grass everywhere or houses and then more grass in the street and then we'll be on our way. I notice another car that is reversing in. It was kind of the silver car colour of the other road that we'd obviously been on, the other cul-de-sac. So I thought that was a little bit weird, but again, I don't want to start being all paranoid and everything in my daily life, so benefit of the doubt, this guy's returning home, fine. And as I walk up this cul-de-sac, it's one that's only like the width of maybe one, one and a half cars, I notice, and again, it's that sixth sense feeling, that there is someone behind me or something following me. So I literally turn my head, just, just a fraction, because I'm walking her here, and that same car, which was reversing backward, is now slowly rolling and following me at a snail's pace. Bearing in mind, again, it was only like a car's width or a little bit more apart. There are no car parking spaces, so it's not like he was going in to park in a house. And the houses were basically at the end. It was almost like a bulb, light bulb socket, right? All the houses were here and that's just nothing. It's just fences and the, the street of the cul-de-sac to go out. And I literally thought at that point, like, oh my God, I could get bundled in this car right now. And I thought, I'm definitely not the one that they want because I look like a slob, so it's definitely the dog. And you know, Pebbles gets a lot of attention whenever she goes out. It's to the point of annoyance actually, because sometimes you just want to be left alone. And I know a lot of people are well-intentioned, but it can also be quite threatening to have people's hands in front of her face, people grabbing her. Some people attempt to lift her up. We always have to be very, very vigilant uh, whenever we, you know, take her for walks and things like that. You just don't know who's watching. And I know a lot of thefts are, I think it's called steal to order. What I did was very quick thinking and I was doing a recording of it and I was doing, you know, recording and then touching my phone which has the ability to take stills as i was doing that 
then this car, which was suddenly rolling at snail's pace towards me, starts rolling slowly backwards. It was like this silver gray Mercedes, I think it was. I have the plate, of course, but I can't do anything with it because nothing actually happened, thank God. And then after I saw that happening, I immediately started power walking outside of this cul-de-sac. And then after I moved to the side, I checked that he wasn't following and I just legged it all the way home. I think maybe even en route, I texted my partner, told him what happened, sent the plate, even sent it to everyone I knew basically in the area. It was a really scary scenario in retrospect. Obviously adrenaline gets you and you don't realize the gravity of what just happened. But as soon as I got home, I just felt this wave of overwhelming sadness that this was now being brought almost to my doorstep. It's just always very important, again, to be super vigilant. But even that being said, of course, there had to be another incident shortly thereafter. And this was actually abroad. This was in Strasbourg. We were essentially on a European road trip tour with Pebbles. It was her first time abroad. It was super, super fun. She had such a lovely time abroad, meeting new doggies, new people, new scents, new sights. And I just think given that she only has such a short lifespan compared to humans, let's just give her the best life that we can. That is the context of why we were abroad. And it was actually on our way back. So we did a basically week long trip. On the way back, we were going through France and we were in Strasbourg just for the morning before driving off. And, you know, we'd parked up at a parking lot underground. We were going into the city centre, but my partner realised he'd left our passports in the car. So we'd already been about five to ten minutes away from the car. So I decided, you know, there's all these shops nearby. I'll just stay with Pebbles so that she can smell, she can sniff. But of course, when my partner's not around, people think that I am an easy target. So I'm outside these shops just perusing around and it's a nice sunny day. Everyone looks really, really nice and friendly. And you know, obviously I got a few comments here and there about how beautiful she is in French, which is always lovely. But then these three, and I'm gonna say homeless individuals or potentially drunkards, and they had their phone on blast with this music. And look, I'm not here to judge people for their lifestyles, but if you come to me, with this kind of menacing behavior and you're being basically lewd and obnoxious. If you try and approach me or touch me or my dog, I'm gonna react a certain ways. I thought they were just passing by because they were walking from this side of the road to the other side. I had my back to the wall of the shop that I wanted to go into. They kept speaking to me in French and look, I speak French, but in a high pressure situation where I don't want to speak to someone as well, like I'm not going to speak to you. They kept talking about pebbles, of course, because they've not seen a dog like that. And I think throughout Europe, I'd learned very quickly that Homskis are a rarity. And so they were just talking about her, pointing to her. They had their hand out and I was basically like, don't you dare, kind of thing. They wouldn't leave. And I was there like texting my partner, like, where the hell are you? Because you need to come here right now. They basically just kept lingering around the area. And um, I think they were asking all these questions, not necessarily in a curious way, you know, people saying like, what's her name? How long have you had her? How old is she? This was basically as though they were seeing, is she worth stealing? I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna take it any other way with strangers who want to pet my dog, touch my dog. We've even had in the past on the trip people who wanted to pick her up and take photos with her and I'm not letting go of that leash at all because you just don't know what people are capable of. But then my partner came. Thankfully they left <laughs> in a hurry, I suppose. So I had to just basically explain what the hell happened and it was very, very jarring. But that all being said, those are the five attempted theft stories that I wanted to share with you today. Again, I want to reinforce that these tales are not meant to be ones that scaremonger. I'd learned very valuable lessons around security and safety, especially as a woman. And so I've made it my life's mission to be vigilant, to not be distracted, to know exactly where I'm going, striding with purpose, to make sure that I know my surroundings, know my area. And I think it's also worth saying, just to end this off, is that it's very important you vote with your wallet or vote with your feet. So voting with your wallet means getting measures, investing in those measures that will keep you safe, as well as voting with your feet in that if your area is rough or if the neighborhood that you're in is not one that you want to involve yourself in anymore, that you don't feel safe. Voting with your feet by leaving that area, like I have actually, is something that is definitely one that you can consider. I know everybody in this particular community is very supportive. And so with that in mind, it would be great if you have further stories or suggestions to leave them down in the comments section below. I would love to see them. I'm sure others would too. But I will leave this video right here. Thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in my next one.